Hello, this is Steve Geis. You're bringing you another Parts Now Tech Tip. What I want to talk about today deals with common mistakes made with maintenance kits. The kind where, let's see, I did a service call. I'm down the road about 10 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, and I get a call saying that the customer is angry because the machine I just did a maintenance kit on is having problems. Paper jam, perhaps? Image defect related issues? Maybe a grinding noise or other type of jam type of related issues? And you start thinking, shoot, what did I do? Because odds are I'm the one responsible for that one. And you go back to find out that, yes, you were uh, in most cases, right? Okay, so I wanna go through the basic elements of when you do a maintenance kit, things to watch out for. I have an HP LaserJet M606, uh, very similar to the M602, P4015, 4250, 40, you know, 4200, all those different types of models there. So I thought it'd be a good machine to take a look at. So with that, Let's take a look at, first off, right out of the cassette tray, I've got a roller. Pop and open the tray, let's pull that out, and let's take a look at our first roller. Our first roller here, so I've got my separation roller in the tray. So it's simple, open up the tray door, I've got a roller there, I pinch the little tab that you can see inside here, and I'm able to slide the roller off. So of course, in the maintenance kit, I'm taking off this roller with the little tab that I've got on there. And I'm gonna put it off to the side, get another roller. I'm gonna put a good one back on here and do the maintenance kit. I open up the door, slide it on, and I've got it in place and it seemed like it was good, but whoa, it's not good. And it's a real common mistake. Sometimes we get busy. Sometimes um, we get a phone call in the middle of things. We thought we got it. I always like to give these guys a tug and make sure. So when you put the roller back on, Give it a tug, make sure that it's in good shape. Another common one, because we do have other rollers inside here, right? And as I kind of take our, our camera here, and I'm gonna tilt it down a little bit so you get a little bit better view of things. So I'm gonna tilt my printer up then so you can see inside, I also have my feed roller and my pickup roller. And my feed roller is the same roller as the last one. It's got the little tab on it so I can pinch it, slide it off, uh, should look very similar to what we just had. Get my new one, put it back on. Um, some maintenance kits will have the pickup roller. In the OEM kits, you do not have a pickup roller, but the tab is different. It's on the inside of the hub, kind of a little bit different there, and also the white hub, so you can see the tab that's there. So when I put these guys back on, okay, I've got, oops, missed the shaft. There's one, I get the other one. I'm kind of doing it by the feel here. I get them both in. Did I get them both in, give them both a tug? Yes, I did. So I'm good with the rollers here. And of course, what happens if I don't install them right? Say I don't give them a tug and one of them's loose. What do I come across? What's gonna be the complaint? You got it, paper jam. And you're gonna go, dang, I'll bet you I didn't check the rollers. So with that, Let's now go to the front half of the machine. Open up the top cartridge, top of the machine here. Pull, up, pull out my toner cartridge. I'm going to have to open up the top cartridge. <laughs> and open up here and taking a closer look inside here. Let's see, I believe we can see our transfer roller down here, the black uh, roller that's inside. And what I want to do is I should be taking that, and normally I would have my number two Phillips in here because I like to use that, get underneath, but here I've got my trusty, you know, you know, Swiss Army pocket knife here. So I'm gonna go underneath and pop that up on the gear side, the left-hand side, and there's a little clip there. And I can lift that up, it's hooked in on the other side, I do not wanna pry up on the other side, I'm just going to slide it out to the side and then remove it. I do not want to get the oil of my hands on this roller, so I don't wanna to touch it physically. Um, many, or some of the newer ones will come without this little clip and without the blue gear. If you get a transfer roller that doesn't have it, you just take it off the current one and you put it on the new one. It's not hard to do. Also a replacement transfer roller, oftentimes will have paper wrapped around the roller with a little piece of tape on that. The advantage of that is that essentially you can grab the roller in the center and you can put it back in that way and not have to worry about touching the roller. So left side in, or excuse me, right side in first over here and then I can tuck it down on the other side, push it down, and it installs that way. Transfer roller. If by chance I'm on a phone call, oh, shoot, yeah, and I put the toner cartridge back in, and there's paper on it, what is that gonna cause? It may cause a paper jam. It very likely will cause an image defect. Um, you get the clues here, okay? So making sure that you do those basics there. Flip the machine around, back half the machine here. We're gonna take a look at our fusing assembly. I tilt it up just a little bit here, give you a little bit better view. So my fusing assembly, this machine has got a duplex assembly on the back here. If you have a duplex assembly, lift up, slide out, 
remove it, not hard to do. Get that out of the way. If you don't have a duplex assembly, oftentimes there's a cover in this place. It's got a little white arrow that points in, just grab it there and slide it out. We need to open up the face up door and sliding around to the other side of the machine, I'm gonna take my finger and put it in this little hole here. And this is at the pivot point of the door. So I'm gonna take that and there's a pin on that door in the bottom there, so I'm gonna press in toward the center and unhook it. As you can see that pin that was inside there when I pulled it out. And it, the other side will then come loose because it also has a pin, as you can see, across the top there. So these kind of help to hold that door in place. Once that off is out, I then have my fusing assembly. Blue tab on the bottom, put my thumb up on top. There's a little ledge there for me to grab it. So I pinch it, both sides, pinch it, and remove it from the machine. Pretty easy to do. There are two clips that hold it in place, left and right. So on these type of machines with those little clips that are in there, it's really important that when I reinstall it, that I get both clips back in place. It's not uncommon for somebody to go, okay, I pushed it in, it's reinstalled, everything's good now. Well, is it? I always like to give it a tug, nice and tight, nice and tight, good. We've seen times where one doesn't fully clip in, but it looks like it's in. And if it's a little bit loose, it'll start working its way loose and the door will fit on the back. That becomes an issue, because what happens now? My gears here that I have on the fusing assembly need to mesh up with the gears on the inside. And if those gears aren't meshing up right, we want a nice tight set of gears. But if that starts pulling away, we're working off the tips. They start grinding away at each other. Or if it's on the other side here, they twist a little bit as they're kind of working. They start chewing each other up. And they may not grind right away, but they're going to grind in time and they're going to cause damage not only to your fusing gear, but more importantly to that fusing drive assembly on the inside, which quite frankly is not a whole lot of fun to get out of this machine if you ever have to do that. So best to avoid it, and of course the way to avoid it that we now know is I put my fuser in, tug, yes, tug, yes, and quite frankly this machine has been redesigned in such a way that these guys really clip in well. Uh, it's, I'm finding it kind of tough to not get them both clipped in on the M606, 605, 604 series. On some of the predecessors, the P4015 series, 4200, 4250, it wasn't uncommon to find that one of them did not get clipped in right. Okay. So I'm going to bring my printer back around here, bring my camera back up so you can see me again and see the printer as we've kind of brought this all together here. So with that, you've got some of the basics, right? So pickup rollers, feed separation rollers, always give them a tug, right? What about the transfer roller? Make sure I get the paper off because I don't want to cause any damage to it. Gear, clip, that might be I had to transfer on. That's pretty easy to do. Don't touch the transfer roller, right? Not good for it. And then last off, fusing assembly. When I, after I install it, what I do? Tug, tug, both sides, make sure I get them both. So if you do that, I think that it'll save you, you know, an occasional shoot, I know what I did, type of call, always double check your work, make sure that you do it right. And when time is of the essence, because time is profitability, that's real important to you in the service world. So with that, this is another Parts Now Tech Tip, Steve Geisher presenting.